Whew. All right. Well, Boar, that was a movie. Uh, you know, I figure when we're reviewing a movie like this, we want to be authentic. Go to the Outback. Fly 16 hours. Spare no expense. Spare no expense for this show, because this show deserves it. Did you hear that? Huh. I don't know. They say they got really big boars in the Outback, but like a boar the size of a bus, you'd think you could see or hear coming. Did you see something over there? Uh. Huh. Must have been the old eyes playing tricks on me again. G'day, mate. Welcome to Bloodstreams, a show that dissects horror movies that you can stream right now. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the movie Boar, a Shudder exclusive. So, the way it works, on Mondays we'll be giving our general impressions, and then on Fridays we'll be giving spoiler reviews. Make sure you come back and check it out. On with the show, mate. In the harsh yet beautiful Australian outback lives a beast, an animal of staggering size with a ruthless driving need for blood and destruction. It cares for none, defends its territory with brutal force and kills with a raw, animalistic savagery unlike any have seen before. Right, well, boar. That was boar. That was a boar. Honestly, unlike the last movie that we reviewed, yeah, uh, which was The Perfection, which did not quite live up to the title, this movie at least had a very large, dangerous boar. I would say it was not boring, unlike the other one. Yeah, it was not boring. Although a lot of people were bored. <laughs> yeah. So that was boar. It was the Shudder exclusive. You can stream that right now on Shudder. It's made in 2017. Written and directed by Chris Sun, who did Charlie's Farm and Daddy's Little Girl. Amongst some other things. I um, mean, starring Nathan Jones as Bernie. And if you see Nathan Jones, you'll know. Because he's really big. He's 6'11". He's, yeah, and just like pure muscle. That pure guy's muscle. a wall. Yeah, um, and, and, and also fantastic. In he's movie. so good. Um, he, uh, you may have seen him in movies like Fury Road, Mad Max Fury Road, um, and Conan the Barbarian, the reboot. And then we also have... A personal favorite of mine, a John Jarrett. John Jarrett. Um, plays of, Ken. Of the Wolf Creek franchise. Yes. He was really, really good in this. Yeah. Bill Mosley, who's also yes. a, fa- a favorite. Bill. They, they've got some really good... Um, the cast in this is great. So, but, they're, but they're not only just a great cast, but they're, but they're like some real like horror uh, icons. Oh, yeah. Uh, he plays Bruce, um, a.k.a. Stepdad. American Stepdad. American Stepdad. Um, he, he was, was in, um, Yeah. You would know him from uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, Texas Chainsaw 2, and one of my favorites growing up as a kid. doesn't hold up quite as much, but I still love it. The Night of the Living Dead yes, remake. Yes, the remake. The 90s remake of Night of the Living Dead. One They're... of the luckiest actors in the world. Why? Because he got to say, They're coming to get you, Barbara. <gasps> Look, there's one of them now. Who else do we have? We have Hugh Sheridan, um, mm-hmm. who I'd never seen before. No. Um, he was, uh, he, he played Robert. He played Robert. The boyfriend. Um, yeah. Uh, Australian Dancing with the Stars. I think it's all we need to say about that. Yeah. Simone Buchanan, who plays Debbie or Mum, she's been in a lot of Australian movies. Uh, Run, Chrissy, Run, Shame are two uh, two of those movies. She's those movies. she's really really good. There's a moment in the film, not spoiling it, but let me just tell you, she brings it to an emotional level that actually had me going like forgetting where we were. What I loved about this, it, I mean, it is it's a B horror movie. Uh, so you go in expecting. I mean, it's about a boar. B for boar. B for boar. Boar is killing everyone in the Australian Outback. Yep. So you know kind of what movie you're getting into. But I, what I loved about the casting, especially with Bill Mosley and um, John Jarrett, mm-hmm. they took these horror icons, Wolf Creek, Texas Chainsaw 2. Villains. They're villains. Yeah. And made turned them into very empathetic, realistic characters. And yeah. I was like, finally seeing these act Like, they are yeah. really good actors. They're solid actors. I feel like I've, I, mean, I can't, I can't. I can't place it. I, I feel like I've seen Bill Mosley in a, in a, a a good guy role before. I mean, he's done. He, I mean, yeah, that he's guy's done so done many, so many things. things uh, but... In the comment section, like maybe you could uh, help us out. But here, but here in the states, uh, we don't get to see John Jarrett. Uh, 
No, much. And uh, he had some really good scenes that you don't typically see in a horror movie oh, like he's this. He's such a solid actor. I mean, because they're, let's face it, like, like you said, it's a B-horror movie. And B-horror movies aren't necessarily known for their brilliant scripts and brilliant dialogue. Although this movie did have some shining examples yeah. of dialogue. John Jarrett had a couple moment, a couple scenes in there where he's had to explain his motivations. And it was pretty, pretty on yeah. the nose. Expositionary Exposition uh, stuff. And he made it just flow so naturally. That's uh, honestly not an easy thing to do. It's not no, an easy he did thing. It. He did it really well. So where should we start with this one? Well, I feel like the overall tone, we, we talked about yeah. it, it's, it's a B movie, but this is one of the the problems I had with the movie. And as much as I actually did kind of enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed it, I, it was yeah. It was definitely a fun ride, and that's really all I wanted. And they, they do stick to that. My problem with it is, is that they had these really nice moments of camp. Mm-hmm. I like camp in a horror movie. But then it would like kind of forget that it's campy and be very serious for a moment. And then camp would come back and kind of like the wrong ones. I, I just feel like the movie, I feel like the movie makers maybe had, were insecure about which direction they were going to go. But if you cannot make a choice on what tone your film is going to be, it's not going to It's not gonna yeah. work. If you watch the credits for this movie, it looks like there's like 15 executive producers in executive this movie. Executive producers. Executive which producers. Which means they're dealing with money yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but when people put money into your movie, as you know, they get a say they in the way ideas. things go. And yeah. I have a feeling that is where why that was a problem. I think one of the big reasons for me why those serious moments failed it was just... The boar was inconsistent. They used a lot of CGI, but they also had amazing practical that, yeah, effects. Yeah, I want to talk about the practical effects of this movie because... Yeah, we're seeing the movie just for that. Some of the practical stuff done in this movie is is better than 90% of the stuff I've seen. I agree. I mean, it, it was it's really good. It, it, but sometimes... It's campy, but the way but it but, works, but it works. It really works. Uh, it works. It lends it, so the camp lends itself to the death scenes. And I, you know, I mean, I don't. I think we talked about this last episode with perfection. I really not for CGI horror no. unless it's done in exceptionally yeah, well. And that's where this movie fails a little bit. Some of the CGI, I have to admit, like I was like, oh, it's CGI, but I like what they were doing with it. You see the boar, and it's a hundred percent CGI in some bits. And I was thinking, if only they could have just stuck with the tighter shots that they used with. with and it was all yeah. practical and it would have worked better. I mean, but, I, I mean, I think, I mean, like, it's it's unfair to do this, but you kind of have to. It's a creature feature. It's a modern creature feature. Yeah. Um, you got to compare it to Jaws, which is, in my opinion... The ultimate... The ultimate creature feature. Monster movie. I yeah. mean, it literally made... Millions of people afraid to go in the water. Me being I still one of them. don't go in the deep end of pools if I'm by myself. Not if the light's not on. I don't go in the pool if the light's not on. Yeah. That's, that's stupid. And that's because there's actually shark men that come out of the drain and they'll get your ankles. One of my biggest criticisms of this movie, you want to see a lot of people die. You want to see the bore. Yeah, get but you some also people, want to care about the characters, too. They spent a lot of time on fodder in yeah. this movie. And when... The actors who are playing the core family are all so good. Yeah, I wanted to see more of them. Yeah, you want to stay with this family and they keep going to these fodder characters who don't mean anything, which I get. But at the same time, if they could have found an organic way to put the fodder into it as opposed to just cut to random people camping or, you know, hunting or stuff like that. If they would have found an organic way to involve those characters, even just in the slightest but, you know, there's something to be said about maybe like, uh, you know, s- saving that those crucial, yeah. you know, you know, 15 to 20 pages on setting yeah. up your characters so that we care about them. Because you know what? Honestly, like if you got some good deaths in there, we'll wait. There is a specific death with a person that doesn't matter to the story in this. And mm-hmm. if they had placed that specific scene in the beginning, yeah, it would have been way better because the beginning relies on CG. Yeah. And these two characters that you don't know, and it's kind of rushed. It almost seemed like an afterthought. I feel like we've, we should save something for the spoiler cast, right? Well, we'll get more in depth in, in the spoiler yeah. cast, so come back this Friday. <laughs> this movie, don't expect a lot. It's great if you like creature films, mm-hmm. and if you've got buddies around, and coffee. Coffee. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're expecting anything more than that, and maybe you're by yourself and want like a really good scary movie, mm-hmm. it might not be the right movie. Honestly, pick. though, here, okay, here's my thing though. Like, you're sitting on the couch, you're like, you know what? I'm in the mood for some elevated horror. I'm gonna check out Boar. Like, come on, you know by the title what kind of movie you're Agreed. getting into. Like, very good point. Honestly, with all this movie's faults, and it it doesn't have a ton of faults. I prefer this kind of movie over what we did last week with Perfection. I agree. Because this movie has fun with what it's doing. It doesn't take itself too seriously all the time. 
And it's not trying to be this smart, elevated horror bullshit. No, it's not trying to be anything other than what it what yeah. it tells you it's going to be right from the title. Perfection was one of those movies that was like, we're going to make, this is a thing I hate, we'll get into this several times on this series, mm. elevated horror, where they go, we're going to make this a horror movie, but it's going to be smart. Well, let me tell you something. If you're not smart and you try and write a smart movie, it comes off as dumb. And to me, that's what the last movie was. This movie is going, we're writing a movie about a killer boar in the outback. Let's have some fucking fun with it. And that's what they did. And that's why it worked. What would you give this movie if you were to give it anything? I mean, like the death. Think about some of those death scenes. They were great. Yeah, you know, I I would give it... um... I don't know. Can you have half of a bloody stump? Uh, I, yeah, I, it's a quarter stump. It's a quarter stump. Okay, so yeah, I give it. Um, I give it like six and a quarter stumps. Six and a quarter stumps. stumps right? Okay. Um, or a six and a half stars, whatever you want to call it. Only because you're right. Like I, I really love a good movie with good practical effects, and they really brought that. Oh, yeah. Even the, even when the effect, the practical effects were cheesy, they were fun. I had fun watching it. I had fun laughing at it when it was. When it was supposed to be laughed at, and I also had fun laughing at it when I don't think it was intentionally supposed to be laughed at, right? Like mm-hmm. it wasn't supposed to be funny. Yeah. It was laughing at it with, in the wrong way, but I but I still had fun. So that's why I, I, would, I would give it six six and a half. I'm gonna go a little bit higher actually. I'm gonna give it seven and a half. Okay. As you were saying, it had fun with what it was doing. The practical effects, when used, were phenomenal. The script was, eh, but the actors really were able to pull it, it off. Yeah. It wasn't lying about what it was. Yep. Uh, and, and it just had fun. That's what, that's what we're giving it. Six, six and a half bloody stumps, seven and a half bloody stumps. Bore, you can check it out on Shudder. I think, I, I recommend it, even though yeah. oh, definitely. I, I like to 100%. Go, I'm critical with my scores, but I, I do think, I do think you should definitely go see this one. Just bring friends and coffee. And I, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. Yeah, I think so too. That does it for this episode. You want to hit the outro and, uh, I'll just stay here and drink my coffee. Yeah. Okay. I just feel like jumping over this chasm of digital hot magma. It's like one of these days it's going to be my last. First world problems. All right, that's our show where we reviewed Boar, the Aussie Outback Slaughter Creature Fest. If you have seen it already, comment below. Tell us what you thought. We're going to be back Friday where we will spoil the heck out of this movie. And we want you to be on the same page with us. So check out the movie. Come back Friday. If you're in the mood for new horror that maybe you haven't seen, why don't you check out our channel? We actually have some original short horror films that are pretty dang cool, if you ask me. We'd love you to check them out. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, murder that notification bell. We'll see you Friday. Bye.